Have you ever built a system like this one with a pretty beefy graphics card and been let down by the fact that it, uh, it sags quite a bit on one side? A lot of this has to do with the weight of the card and also the tolerances built into the case in question. Well, in this video, I'm gonna show you how you might be able to fix it for about 10 US dollars. Stay with me. To get rid of that annoying activation watermark, hop on over to VIP SCD key and purchase a Windows 10 Pro OEM key for fractions of the price of retail. Just use a secure payment method like PayPal, receive your key in seconds and activate your OS here. Bye bye watermark. Mark. And be sure to use our new offer code SKGS for a sweet discount. And before I show you the product, which again, it's, it's very simple and you've probably already seen some of these before, but you might not have seen one in a dedicated video like this. Uh, I do want to mention that there is a possibility that you don't have to spend any money at all uh, and you could still fix the graphics card SAG problem. Jay's Two Cents is a video talking about how some cases have too much play uh, at the rear of the PCI slot kind of insertion paths where these graphics cards kind of slide into position. If the card is not being held firmly enough by the back of the case, it will be allowed to shake around like this. This is pretty cringy here uh, to see happen, but uh, it is one of the primary reasons why these cards sag, especially heavy ones. Uh, and when you have a case that has a lot of play, well, that card's gonna sink as far as the case will let it. But I found that a lot of newer cases especially don't allow you to manipulate how much space there is around these GPU prongs behind the motherboard tray. And as a result, you've either gotta just deal with the sag, which let's be honest, it doesn't look that great, especially in this build here. You can either turn the graphics card vertical, which will compromise additional PCIe slots. You can't use expansion cards. You can't use uh, capture cards. You can't use Wi-Fi cards, all of that, unless you have weird like multi riser, I don't know, vertical kits. They exist, but they're not very practical. Or you can use a cheap little standoff here, maybe a 3D printed one or something similar to that, uh, that will hold this side of the graphics card up and get rid of that sag. And this is an example of what one of those might look like. This came included actually in an ROG uh, motherboard. So this is an Asus little prop. And it's pretty simple. I'm not a huge fan of these again, just because they look, I mean, they look a bit silly. They just, uh, you know, it, it kind of breaks up the flow. It does fix the sag problem, but I don't know. I, it's just not my cup of tea. And that's where this easy DIY bracket comes into play. Now, full disclosure, I bought this myself for 10 bucks. Figured why not? Actually, I bought two of them because I wanted to use one in this rig here. Uh, we actually have Fractal now sending a vertical kit for this. You've probably already seen that video by this point. But uh, I bought two of these because I figured I would, I'd use them. I, I have plenty of cards that, that sag in builds. And uh, this is a very minimal kind of like on the DL fix. It doesn't look as bad as the prop, in my opinion, and it's not as big and gaudy as some of those AIB solutions. Like I know MSI includes a bracket similar to this, but it's much bigger, much thicker. And I just, I, I don't know. It's very difficult to make something like that look good in a build. So this is what you're gonna get in the box. You can see it's a very minimalistic bracket here. It's not designed to stand out from the crowd, so to speak. And you've only got, uh, a few extra things bundled with it. So uh, three screws and then a couple of uh, little rubber mounting points. And I'll show you what those do here in a second. So what we need to do first is remove the three thumb screws that hold the card in uh, and potentially one below the card. If you have uh, just a two slot card like this one, most cards are gonna be either a two or one slot. We'll pull this one below it as well. We might need to move everything down by one slot. I'm not entirely sure. So there is quite a bit of play here. You can slide the bracket up and down depending on how thick the card is, which is quite nice. I think we're gonna need, yep, we're gonna need to skip the top slot. So I'm gonna slide the bracket in and uh, you can see we've moved everything down by, by one slot. I'm gonna try to get the thumb screws back in. They actually give you three screws to use. They're a bit longer, but I think we can get away with the, uh, the stock thumb screws. And there's the last one. Now there is a bit of play kind of forward and back. So you can have this bracket hang down a bit more for whatever reason, if you wanted to do that, that would kind of defeat the purpose of the bracket altogether. Uh, but you could also angle it a bit upward and uh, that might provide a bit more uh, in reinforcement uh, for the card if it is especially large. And I've purposely chosen a large card to demonstrate this with because if it works for a card like this, then it will probably work for uh, your smaller graphics cards out there as well. So you can see the bracket is more or less perfectly horizontal and the card definitely starts to sag the further toward the right we go. Now I have not installed this little uh, 
rubber mount here. And this is what is going to make contact with the uh, graphics card. So the top of this here, just a small little contact point because let's be honest, the bottoms of these cards, they have a lot of times fans and things in the way. Uh, so you can kind of slide this around. I know the focus is going whack here, but you can kind of move this uh, forward or back along that bracket, to kind of position it uh, where the card will allow it to be mounted. I'm gonna use my phone's flashlight here so you guys can see under. Uh, there is a fan right in the way of the edge of the bracket. So we're gonna try to put this little rubber stopper probably two thirds of the way down. And there we go, I think that looks pretty good. The sag is, it's still probably there, just a tad leaning down and I could probably fix that with a few adjustments. But uh, all I really did was loosen the thumb screws on the left side prop the card up, I switched to the longer rubber standoff because it was interfering with the fans, the actual bracket was. It sits a bit uh, recessed under the card. So when your card is thicker from left to right, um, this bracket could, if you raise it high enough, hit those fans. And um, so I got around that by using the, the included uh, longer rubber standoff. But anyway, um, if I you know wanted to tighten things up a bit, I could push up a bit harder on that and then retighten the thumb screws. But I'm really happy with the way this looks. I mean, this is, in my opinion, a night and day difference. My graphics card sag, I mean, it's something that, uh, let's be honest, a lot of people in the comments like to point out when they see it, when it's so obvious. And uh, hopefully going forward, especially in our PCDC series when I'm fixing viewer systems, if I notice they have severe sag, I'll just use one of these $10 brackets, uh, upgrade them for, you know, on the cheap, just a, an aesthetic upgrade that should uh, help make their system look a bit more symmetrical, a bit more uniform. I think this goes a long way for a $10 investment. So I think this build looks a heck of a lot better with the bracket installed versus without. And I think personally that that justifies the $10 investment. Look, let's be honest, 10 bucks is probably what you're paying for shipping for some of these more expensive components. So I don't imagine it'll put too big of a dent into uh, most of your PC building budgets out there. And the only other real compromise is that you lose an extra PCI slot. That's about it. Although the slot right below the base of your graphics card usually remains vacant anyway. You don't want to put another card if you're running SLI or Crossfire for whatever reason directly under the top card. This top card will choke uh, and you typically have a bit of spacing between primary PCI slots anyway. Um, so missing, right, losing that one extra slot just below the card won't be detrimental in the long term. Uh, although I will say worst case, if this doesn't fit for whatever reason, I imagine it will because it fit even this really chunky card here. But uh, if it doesn't fit, you can always return it, you know, kind of a worst case scenario. This doesn't really have too many compromises associated with it. I imagine it will fit most cards out there again, which is why I used a beefy card like this. If it fits this card, it will probably fit your smaller cards as well. I will have this link below if you want to check it out again it's about 10 bucks the price might fluctuate depending on exposure inventory levels and, and the sort but uh this really shouldn't cost any more than five or ten bucks if i'm being frank and if you have amazon prime you can get it shipped to you for free so you shouldn't spend any more than uh than 10 bucks plus tax whatever taxes um, applicable in your state. Uh, so with that, I am going to package this back. I'm actually gonna include this in the build, but I'm gonna be turning this card vertical. I had Fractal Design sent a, a vertical uh, riser kit uh, for this build because it's going to the disabled veteran that you guys probably heard about in one of the previous videos. That's what this build is, uh, it's what it's for. It's going to him. And uh, I wanna give him some flexibility. Obviously the vertical mount, right, that compromises the remaining PCI slots. If he has a capture card or a Wi-Fi card or something else he wants to use, even though there's baked in Wi-Fi on this board, um, he can always switch back to the conventional horizontal setup and then use this little uh, $10 bracket to prop the card up because it is sagging quite a bit without it. With that, let me know what you think about this video in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe, click the like button, and do other things in the comment section if there are links. You can check those out, I appreciate it. And I'll catch you in the next one. My name is Greg, thanks for fixing graphics card sag with me.